Today I want to teach you about direct proportion statements, okay? Now for this aspect of this topic, we need to know this formula. It's pretty simple, it's just y equals kx. Okay, so y is a variable, it's your, in, uh, it's your dependent variable. Um, x is also a variable, that's your independent variable. Um, but we'll learn more about dependent and independent variables in our next topic, that's not overly important right now. Um, but we need to know that k is our constant of proportionality uh, because k clearly stands for constant uh, in the maths world because we are not English teachers. So apparently k stands for constant. Anyway, all right, <clears throat> let's ignore that. Um, but anyway, that is our formula that we need to know for this um, part of the topic. Um, it's super simple. All we're doing is subbing in values into this formula to then get an answer to be able to calculate k. So here we have our first question. It says find k when y is equal to 140 and x is equal to 14. All right, so all I'm going to be doing is taking my formula, so y equals kx, and I'm going to be subbing values into this formula. So it tells me that y is 140. I don't know what k is, so I'm going to leave it as k, and x is 14. Now, anytime you have two letters shoved up against each other, you know they're going to be multiplied together. So this is, there's a little invisible multiplication sign in here. All right, so how do I move this 14 over to the other side? Because at the end of the day, I'm trying to find out what k is equal to. So how do I move my 14? What is the opposite of multiplying by 14? I'm going to divide by 14. That cancels them out. I divide the other side by 14 and I get k is equal to 10 because 10, uh, 14 goes in 140 10 times. All right, but you'll notice that this topic is, uh, this part of the topic is called direct proportion statements. Okay, so I'm not stopping here. The goal isn't just to um, find what k is equal to, um, although I should have been more elaborate in my question. Um, Anyway, I want to write a direct proportion statement, and all I do for that is I just write, rewrite my um, formula, y equals, but instead of k, I put what k is equal to. So 10x, and that is my direct proportion, oops, direct proportion statement, okay? So I'm not putting any values for y or x, I'm only putting a value for k. All right, let's do another one. Okay, there we go, that's better. Now it's telling us that we not only have to find the value of k, but that we also have to write a direct proportion statement. Uh, it's also magically appeared here as well. <clears throat> okay, cool. So here, it go, uh, here in this question it says find k when y is equal to 15 and x is equal to 10. So again, I'm going to take my formula, which is y equals kx, and in the place of those letters, I'm going to fill in, uh, I'm going to sub in the numbers that they've given me. So y is 15. 15 is equal to k uh, times 10. Uh, how do I move this 10 to the other side to make k the subject? I'm going to divide both sides by 10. Divide by 10, they've cancelled out. So k is equal to, how many 10s go into 15? I get 1.5. Okay, cool, but I don't stop there because the second half of my question is to write a direct proportion statement. So I take this k and I chuck it back in my formula and I leave it at that. So y equals 1.5x and that's my final answer. So that is how we do direct proportion statements. We take our formula, sub in whatever numbers they give us till we get down to k. Then we rewrite this formula leaving y and x as those letters, but we just put in this value for k, whatever we solved our um, question, whatever k is equal to. Great, and that's pretty much it for um, direct proportion statements. Now using this, something like this, we could then go further and calculate, um, say, the value of y if x was something different. Actually, you know what, let's do one of those now. Okay, so now I've taken our direct proportion statements from the previous questions, so y equals 10x, and over here we've got y equals 1.5x, 
And now we're going to use those direct proportion statements to solve another question. So it says find y using our direct proportion statement, y equals x, uh, 10x, when x equals 7. So we're just trying to find the value of y. We've got our direct proportion statement that we're going to be using. So y equals 10x, and then tell us what x is. So we're just going to sub that in. So y equals 10, uh, 7. So 10 times 7 gives us 70. So y equals 70. There we go. Solve that question. Super easy. All right, let's have a go at this one. So uh, find x using this direct proportion statement, y equals 1.5x, when y equals 60. So y equals 1.5x, that's the direct proportion statement that we're given, which is the one we solved before. Um, and now they give us a value for y. So instead of y, I'm writing 60 equals 1.5x. Okay, the goal of this question is to find the value of x. So how do I get x on its own over here? I need to split this 1.5 and the x up. Oops, wrong colour. So I need to divide both sides by 1.5. That will cancel them out. So x is equal to uh, 1.5 goes into 60 40 times. So for this question, x is 40 when y is 60. So um, finding, like calculating um, the constant is the first thing you'd probably be asked to do in one of these questions. Um, and then you need to write a direct proportion statement. And now in order to write a direct proportion statement, it's going to wind up looking like this, where it's y equals something x. So for a direct proportion statement, you're only putting a number where the k is. Because k somehow stands for constant. Um, yeah, cool. And then from there, you'll be able to solve it no matter what numbers you're given for x and y. Great. Thank you for watching.